Ahoy! Would you like to heal your allies and support your friends in battle? Then you've come to the right place, because today we're going to introduce you to the Lifestaff's playstyle, how the abilities work, and also give you a build along the way. Let's roll the intro. Notice I didn't say I'm Duke Sloth and I will be your guide? Well, that's because I won't be your guide today. At least not your only guide. Joining me will be the fantastic Micah, whose channel I recently stumbled across, and she is dedicated to healing, I can tell you that much. So I figured an expert like her can introduce you to a lot more in-depth details that I may otherwise overlook. Let's begin with a quick introduction to the life staff. And for that, I hand the metaphorical mic over to Micah. Alright. So the life staff in New World feels like a very traditional MMORPG healing weapon. It is a large healing staff that can utilize AoE healing, single target healing, and buffs to support allies and keep everyone alive. The life staff is the only healing weapon currently in New World, which by extension means it is the only weapon that can be efficient in healing. The life staff is also currently the best weapon at keeping a 100% uptime on Fortify, a damage reduction buff, should you choose to go with a buffing playstyle. The life staff is not good at dealing damage, as it only has one damage skill available in its entire kit, so players will heavily rely on their offhand for damage that isn't an auto attack. With that said, players who are likely to really enjoy life staff are people who enjoy healing and supporting other players in their groups, along with perhaps solo players looking to add a bit more self-survivability to their damage kits. For attributes, life staff only scales with focus, and not only that, it is the only weapon in the game thus far that scales with focus to begin with. I would be on the lookout though, New World has some weapons in the works to be released which should hopefully include a new focus weapon. When adding attribute points towards life staff, I would also add in at least 50 constitution as your survivability as a healer is key to ensuring you can keep the rest of your team up. So, now that you know what the life staff is about, let's have a look at the abilities, starting with the healing tree. The first ability here is Divine Embrace. This heals your target for 150% of the weapon damage and has a 1 second cast time. It can also be self-casted so you can self-heal with it. It has a 25 mana cost and a 6 second cooldown, so relatively short. And if you upgrade it with some perks, then it can bounce between multiple targets. The second ability is one that you've most definitely noticed if you've seen any healer footage before or you have played New World and that is Sacred Ground. This is a circle AoE heal that lasts for 15 seconds and heals for 20% of the weapon damage every second. So in total it's a 300% weapon damage healing, assuming you stay in the circle the whole time. This ability is instant, it has no cast time. It has a 15 mana cost and a 20 seconds cooldown, but this cooldown takes down while the ability is active so effectively, it only has a 5 seconds downtime. So on a healer with sufficient mana, you'll see this on the ground most of the time. When investing into additional perks, this can increase all of your healing by 50%, and Micah confirmed to me that this actually includes the healing from Sacred Ground itself as well. You'll see this ability frequently being used both in PvE on the tanks and also in wars on control points. It becomes god tier in wars when stacking it with other healers healing, because obviously it just increases everything. The third ability is Splash of Light. Splash of Light is an AoE group heal with a 100 meter radius. It used to be quite popular in Wars because it used to heal everyone around you. Now it only heals party members. Thanks to Liquid Blue for giving me the footage for this by the way, you'll find his Twitch link down below. While AoE, Splash of Light only heals for 50% of the weapon damage. It costs 15 mana and has a 15 seconds cooldown. The ability has no cast time, but it has a brief pre-animation before the heal goes through. With perks, this ability can also remove one debuff from allies. The other tree is the Protector tree. In the Protector tree, the first ability is aptly named Orb of Protection. This is an instant projectile that has a little circle targeter on the ground, and it grants 10% fortify for 20 seconds. It also heals allies, but for 10% weapon damage. On the other hand, it deals 146% weapon damage to enemies. Its mana cost is 16 and the cooldown is 10 seconds. It needs to be aimed at allies, but it's not very hard because the radius is relatively big. The first perk of this ability makes it quite different because it adds a heal over time, which is 7.5% in 10 seconds, 
or 75% weapon damage in total and also applies the beneficial effects of the ability to yourself, so you get a self heal too. The last perk makes the ability a 3 meter radius AoE that can hit multiple allies. The second ability is Beacon. This is a circle AoE heal that is fired as a projectile and can kind of stick to things. It also deals 146% weapon damage to enemies. It heals allies for 20% every 1 second for 10 seconds, so 200% healing in total. It has a 16 mana cost and 35 second cooldown, relatively long. This can stick to enemies or allies and move around with them, but be careful throwing it on enemies, sometimes it can kind of glitch out and then not heal your allies. And while you cannot stick it to yourself, you can put it on the ground right in front of you and just stand in it to heal yourself. With additional perks, the duration can be increased by 5 seconds for a total of 300% healing. The last ability is Light's Embrace. Light's Embrace heals for 100% of the weapon damage. This ability is instant. It is better for PvP because of this instant cast, but is also very mana heavy. It has 18 mana cost and a 4 second cooldown, so it's very spammable. However, a really cool feature about it is that the healing done by this is increased by 30% for each buff on the target that you're healing. This can lead to massive boosts in late game, when you have tons of buffs on you as a tank for example, or you're in a war where everyone buffs everyone. One of the perks allows you to return 25 stamina to a target when you heal them, which is huge for tanks that rely on the block stamina. The maxed out perk here extends all life staff buff durations by 2 seconds. When it comes to weapon pairings, the life staff is extremely versatile. With the addition of an amber gem, you can have your secondary weapon scale off of focus as well. And even though this gem has been nerfed to ensure healers do less damage, it still significantly increases the potency of your offhand as a life staff user. That being said, weapon pairings I think work very well with life staff in melee are Warhammer for added crowd control, Crate Axe for mobility, Sword and Shield for survivability, and Hatchet for mobility and a sunbreak. For long range, Ice Gauntlet has amazing synergy and survivability with Life Staff, and I felt it stood out the most from the rest of the ranged weapons. Just a disclaimer, this is a work in progress and perks may be changed at launch, so take this guide with a grain of salt. In spending your points for leveling, the first skill I always pick up is Divine Embrace. I don't end up keeping this skill unless I'm specced for dungeon content, but it is amazing when you first start off as mobs hit hard and this heals for a very decent amount in early game. For PvP later down the road, you can opt for Light's Embrace instead, which has no cast time if you're looking for an efficient single target heal. Next, I actually take a passive called Absolved instead of my next active skill, as this eliminates all mana usage from your light and heavy attacks, allowing you to put all of your mana into healing instead, making you much more efficient at killing mobs while leveling. Next, I grab Sacred Ground, and I feel as though this is a staple AoE in both PvE and PvP due to its final passive, Blessed, which increases all healing while inside of the AoE of the skill by 50%, which is huge. Next, I go into the Protector Tree and grab Orb of Protection. I'll actually keep this skill if I'm solo leveling, but if I'm playing with friends, I'll eventually swap it out for Beacon later down the road, as the double AoE from Beacon and Sacred Ground do massive amounts of healing on allies. I put my next point into Blissful Touch to turn my light attack into a small heal. Then I pick up Revitalize for a cooldown reduction and the first passive of Orb of Protection for a heal over time buff. Now, you can either spend points into getting both passives for Sacred Ground, or you can opt to become a bit tankier, which I would recommend for solo play. If you want to be tankier, I would instead put those two points into Bend Light and Protector's Touch, giving you a heal boost and fortify. At this point, you can either opt to keep Orb of Protection or trade it out for Beacon. Since I often play with friends, I love switching to Beacon as it is a very fun skill to use as it is a large AoE that can attach to enemies and allies. If you stack it with Sacred Ground, you can fully heal someone in a matter of seconds. After swapping to Beacon, I will take the first two passives for Sacred Ground, followed by the first two passives for Beacon. This increases the radius and the duration of Beacon, which makes it an altogether easier to use skill. The final two passives I highly recommend taking afterward are Sacred Protection and Intensify, as they both greatly improve your overall healing output. The rest of your points are up to your preferred playstyle. If you keep Orb of Protection and want to maintain buffs more efficiently, you can pick up Glowing Focus and Protector's Strength, which both increase your buffs. 
If you're looking to just give an overall good healing output, however, I would pick up Privilege, Shared Struggle, and Divine Blessing. Speed of Light and Balance are the final two passives I'll pick up for higher mobility. I hope you guys found this helpful, and huge thanks to Duke Sloth for allowing me to collaborate on this video. If you're looking for more healer-focused content for New World, feel free to check out my channel where I upload everything healer, including guides and gameplay. I also stream on Twitch if you want to catch me live. Hope to see you guys in New World! And I'd like to thank Micah for helping me make this video. In case you haven't noticed, it was actually her playing in the background the whole time as well. I highly recommend checking out her channel if you're interested in more healer info. She goes a lot more in depth there and obviously it can be updated a little bit quicker than it could be on my channel. You can see a link in the top right right now in the description and down below. If you enjoyed this video, you can also consider subscribing and clicking the bell on my channel of course. I'll be making tons more weapon guides in the next days. I've already done the Great Axe and Hatchet, but we still have quite a few to go and I will make sure to cover all of them. Also feel free to hop in my Twitch or Discord if you have any questions. Again, all links down below. Thank you for watching, I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.